Hey guys, so there's a question I've been hearing a lot of lately, and uh, I thought Jesse asked it particularly well. Um, he or she said, sorry Jesse, I don't know your pronoun, um, but Jesse commented, I can't seem to understand relative keys. If C major and A minor are relatives, then how do you know when you're playing in the key of C major or A minor? Now, relative key is just two keys that have all the same notes in them. So you could say it this way. Uh, if the key of C major has seven notes in it, and the key of A minor has the exact same seven notes in it, how are they different? And if you've been learning about modes, you'll find the same problem there. The F Lydian mode, for example, has all the same notes as C major and A minor, so how is that any different? So here's how to start thinking about it. If I say I wrote a song in the key of C major, C major, I'm telling you that I wrote a song that used these seven notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'm not going to write them in any particular order to say that, you know, these notes. If I tell you I wrote a song in the key of A minor, I'm telling you that I wrote a song using those exact same seven notes. But there is more to it than that. When I say C major, I'm saying more than just I use these seven notes. I'm also saying that the way I use those notes made C, the note C, sound kind of special. I made it kind of the center focal point of everything I did when I made chords and wrote melodies and put together my song. So C became kind of a special note. Now if I say I wrote a song in A minor, I'm saying yes, I used these same seven, but this time I made A sound like the sort of focal point of everything. It was a terrible color. There we go. So what does that really mean? Well, something kind of odd happens when you play a group of notes together, you know, whether you're stringing it together for melodies or you're playing chords or any of the normal song-making stuff. Um, the human mind likes to get kind of attached to one of the notes. It starts sounding very comfortable and nice and everything else kind of relates to that particular note. And they call that note the key center um, or also the root note or the tonic. They all mean the same thing. Just that note sounds like the center of everything. Here's kind of a related example that I think is interesting. Um, if I turn on a metronome, okay, and I count one, two, three, one, two, three. If you listen to that, just count in your head, count one, two, three. Okay, that first note kind of stands out in your mind. It actually sounds a little bit louder. Listen to it again. One, two, three. Now, hopefully you can kind of hear that, but the note isn't louder. This is just playing one click over and over, but your mind kind of highlights it. Once it's kind of given a nudge, once you start counting in this particular way, that note starts to stand up. And if instead you counted one, two, three, four, then rather than every third note sounding louder, it would be every fourth note that kind of has this louder sound to it. And that's just your mind kind of building this little framework and then kind of highlighting this first note. Now obviously this is a rhythm example, but the same thing kind of holds true here. If you give your mind a little nudge or kind of do a couple little things to convince it that this one particular note is special, that note starts to stand out. Now you might think like, okay, that doesn't sound like that big of a deal. I mean, so in C, this note is kind of highlighted, in A, this note is kind of highlighted. But it's actually a lot more than just that. Um, once one of these notes is established as the key center, once your mind has kind of convinced itself of that, then your brain relates everything else to that particular note. Well, I'll give you an example. So let's say I play something in the key of A, and don't worry about the details just yet. But say I do some things. that, for whatever magical reason, make A sound like this key center. Okay. So I do this, and then I play a B. Your brain hears that B, and it relates it to A. So this B, it has this sound. 
Now, let's say instead I do whatever magical thing I need to do to make C sound like a key center. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so now your mind is kind of attached to this note C. And I play that B. Very, very different sound than when we were in the key of A. It has this sort of tenseness to it. It wants to move into the C. It's way less comfortable sounding than it was before. Now that's kind of odd because I'm just playing that B by itself, but in the key of A it takes on one particular feeling, in the key of C, totally different feeling. So that's why this is so important. By highlighting one of these notes and saying this is the key center, everything else takes on a different sound, as opposed to making C the key center. Totally different. Now, as kind of a bonus, um, if you're thinking about modes, if you take these same seven notes and instead of making A the key center or C the key center, if you pick, for example, F, then you're playing what's called the F Lydian mode. If you make D sound like the key center, you're playing a D Dorian mode. That's the whole idea of modes. In fact, C major and A minor, those are modes. That's kind of what a mode is. Anyway, don't want to spend too much time on that. So the only real question left is, how do you do that? How do you make one of these notes kind of stand out and sound like it's the key center? And you might also be wondering why when I claimed to be playing A minor, I was playing a G sharp. Get to that too. Now, like I said, you need to give your brain a little nudge to convince it that one of these notes is the key center. There's a couple ways to do it. But I want to start by showing you something that I think is kind of interesting. There's a scale, it's called the whole tone scale. Okay, and it's one of the easiest scales in the world. You start on a note, we'll take E for example, and you just go up by a whole step. Whole tone is just another name for whole step. So you go up a whole step, and then a whole step, and then a whole step, and a whole step, and a whole step, and a whole step. It is just nothing but whole steps. So, okay. This scale is really weird because every note is exactly the same distance as the next one. So there's no like markers or anything changing while you're playing through this scale. So what happens when you listen to this scale it has this very kind of floaty, drifty sound because there's no single note in there stands out. So your mind has a very hard time like getting attached to any one of them. And if you if you'll notice this in like 80s films like if uh, if the character goes into this like kind of dream state or something. They don't do it so much cuz it's kind of cheesy at this point, but it, they'll almost always play this scale. And it kind of floats off. For that exact reason, it sounds kind of drifting and floating, like there's no key center. Contrast that to an E major scale, which sounds like this. Totally different feel. It sounds very much like this is the final note. And the reason for that, or at least one of the reasons for that, is because of this last little half step. When you have two notes that are just a half step apart, especially when most everything else around it is all separated by a whole step. That half step kind of creates this like, almost sort of tension resolution sound. It kind of slides into that note right here, and it kind of gives your mind that little nudge saying like, ah, this note, like, listen to this one, and your brain just kind of says, oh yeah, that's probably my key center. Now, let's go back to this example for a second, the C major example. If I start on C and I play these seven notes, there's this little half step right here leading into C. It makes it very easy to have this C sound like key center. Now, obviously there must be more to it than just that, because if we're trying to write a song in A minor, we don't have that half step leading into the A. Look at these notes here. No half step coming to that A. So we don't have that benefit of that sort of resolution sound. Now there's a couple things you can do here. Um, one option is to actually just take the G and raise it by a half step and just kind of force that to happen. They do that in classical music all the time. Um, it's less common in popular music. 
But that's one way of getting that sort of tension resolution sound. Now, the side note with that, you might think like, well, okay, if that's the case, then why don't we say the key of A minor is A, B, C, D, E, F, G sharp? And that's because they only do that little alteration, they only make that G sharp when they're trying to get that sort of tension resolution sound. The other chords in the key, the other melodies in the key, they'll just use a G natural like normal. And whenever you want that strong tension resolve onto A sound, they'll use the G sharp. Uh, that's the harmonic minor scale, in fact. Um, harmonic minor is just exactly like a, a natural minor scale. But you take that seventh note and you raise it up for that exact purpose to get that tension resolution sound. But you don't have to do that and you can still be in the key of A. So here's something to think about. Take that E whole tone scale again. Okay, nothing about this scale. There's no little half steps. Nothing makes it want to highlight a particular note. But you could, if you want to, cause E to sound like the key center. The way you would do it is you would just kind of highlight that note E. You could write melodies that sort of start and end on it. You know, kind of highlight that note. You could play chords that focus on that note. You can just play the note louder, play it at the end of phrases. Just kind of go out of your way to make that E sound like the center point of that scale. And like I said, it doesn't take too much. You give your mind that little nudge. And E starts to sound like the center of the key. So you could do it there too. And kind of the same logic applies if you're trying to make these notes sound like A minor. If you just kind of highlight the A, play some chords that start on A, keep going back to it, keep resolving melodies to it, that A will sound like the key center. You don't have to have that little half step resolution to do it. But it is a good option, it's a very powerful sound. It's a very powerful sound using that little half step resolving into the key center. And by the way, what I'm doing here, I'm just playing a chord that uses that little uh, G sharp in it. This is what's called an E dominant 7 chord. I don't want to talk about chords today, but for reference, that's what I'm doing here. E dominant 7, which is just a chord that uses G sharp, resolves nicely into that A chord. Now, one other thing I wanted to bring up really quick. Um, I don't talk about uh, reading sheet music very often on my channel because I don't want that to get in the way of, you know, learning this stuff. But if you do read sheet music, um, you're probably familiar with key signatures, which is this idea that, you know, at the beginning of a piece of music, there will be, you know, sharps and flats that tell you what notes are in the song. So you might be used to thinking, like, you'll see a sharp and think, oh, this, this song is in the key of G major. But in fact, these key signatures what they tell you is what group of notes you're going to be dealing with. So in this case, it's saying all the notes are natural except for the F. That's an F sharp. So you're going to be dealing with this group of notes. But it does not actually tell you which one of those notes is the key center. That is something you have to figure out by looking at the music or even listening to it. So you're going to have to look at that music and figure out which note is that center point. Because this could mean the key of G major, it could also mean the key of E minor, or it could even be a mode like A Dorian or something like that. So that's something to consider when you're looking at key signatures. Just wanted to bring that up really quick. So just to kind of sum all this up, if you say key of C major or key of A minor, you're talking about this group of seven notes in both cases. But by saying C major, you're also saying that C is the key center. If you're saying A minor, you're saying A is the key center. If you said F Lydian, you would be saying same group of notes, but F is the key center. And keep that in mind when you're thinking about keys and major and minor and all that stuff. So guys, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Sorry about all the noise tonight. For some reason, there's like a convoy of garbage trucks driving past my apartment. So sorry, I hope you can still hear me okay. If you wanna help me make more of these videos, please leave your suggestions. Um, at this point, almost all my videos are coming from people's suggestions, so I totally appreciate that. Um, and you can also check out my Patreon campaign if you wanna help contribute that way. Um, and there, if you pledge, I will uh, mail you uh, these little 3D printed, uh, musical practice dice that I kind of came up with that I think are kind of cool. 
But um, yeah, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.